Yo, yo, what's up, Todo Mundo? Dennis Death Martinez, and I got one of the illest lyricists on my left hand side right now. Y'all know I'm at Slug. What's up? is like crowded around the corner. Got this place sold out two nights in a row. You know, I mean, I seen Gwen Stefani do it. And you know, <laughs> they have like a big mainstream name, but like underground cats also have that same power. So it's like, I wanna, can you kind of elaborate on that, how that works? I mean, it's like, there's a, there's, a, there's a big scene for this, man. There's a lot of kids that are down with it. The difference between, I think, the mainstream artists that do it and how we do it is like the mainstream artists are available to everybody. Everybody, you know, it's easy to hear them on the radio, on the video, your friends at school, whatever. Whereas with, with groups like us or Abstract Rude, the kids that get into us generally search the South themselves. You know, I didn't have a big budget to make sure that I could implant myself into their heads. You know what I mean? It's like, and so on one hand, the kids that do find us, they take us real personal because they feel like they discovered us. They feel like they found us. And so it adds to their identities. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of a beautiful thing. We love you. We love you more than this. <laughs> so Very We still buy it 2008. This year we're going to meet you. So we buy Mayor's resolution. We came all the way from Santa Barbara today to see you. Scout tickets. Yeah, we got them. We got them. I mean, granted, we still have our goals. We still have, you know, the things we want to get done and 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 and, and do for the movement. And one of the things is not so much to make this mainstream, but to, to make it available to people who might not have the resources to go searching for stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's kids out there that ain't got the internet. They they ain't got the access to find abstract root or me. And even though you know cats like us, we got gems for these kids. We got things to say to these kids. And and some of the kids that really need to hear what we're talking about sometimes don't even get the opportunity to hear us. And and that's that's really the that's the barrier we're trying to break. You know. And, and and with that, I see it starting to break because of how popular some of us are getting. Then you see kids starting to go, okay, let me check this out. What is this? You know. And then and that's and that's hopefully you know where everything will come together. Ain't no way to explain or say how painful the hangover was today. In front of the toilet on my hands and knees, trying to breathe in between the dry heaves. My baby made me some coffee, great that if I drink some, it's probably coming right back out. Me. Couple of Advil, relax and chill, at a standstill with how bad I feel. I think I need to smell fresh air, so I stepped out the back door and fell down the stairs. Sunlight hit me dead in my eye like this man that I gave you today to last night. Bad sight made me trip on my ass right into that patch of grass like that's life. All of a sudden, I realized something. The weather is amazing, even the birds are gone. Stood up and took a look at a rat. Man, that light that I forgot that I possessed. Never really seen exercise and strength, but I think some that's never need a ride that can speed. Breaks are broke, it's alright. So for those of, for those of my uh, you know viewers out there that really don't know you or your background, can you, you know break it down for us? How you get into the music? I mean, I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and so you know in the mid '80s, I'm product of a kid who really didn't know nothing about hip hop. Just saw it starting to make it make its way into my area via media, movies. You know, Breaking came out, and all of us were like. What is this? You know, it's a, it's a youth thing. So we felt already like we identified with it. We wanted to get down with it. So we was hungry for more. So then, you know, I had friends that were bringing mixtapes back from New York. And I'd always heard rap because my dad would drive around in his car and it would come on the radio. It'd be Earth, Wind & Fire and the Rapper's Delight and then something else. But to me, I didn't see it as the movement because I was just a kid. It was just more music that my dad played. But right around the time that Run DMC happened, 
that's when I was like, yo, these dudes ain't talking to my dad. These dudes are talking to me. You know what I mean? And so that's, you know, that's really what, I think Run DMC is what really clinched it for me or, or pulled me in at like 12, 13 years old. You know, when, when they did uh, King of Rock, even the first record, I knew what it was and it was hitting, but I wasn't really old enough to be out buying records just yet. But when King of Rock came out, that's when I was on it. That's when I started, you know, doing whatever, shoveling sidewalks for old people just so I could get five dollars so I could run down to the record store and cop a LL Cool J 12 inch or something. And, and from there, man, it was just like any kid from a, from a city that wasn't on the coast. We were so hungry for it and we were so, you know, we knew that this was something going on that didn't have nothing to do with us. We were just fans of it. Therefore, we took it so personal. You know, our identities, we didn't feel entitled to it. So therefore, we taught ourselves how to do all of it just to prove how down we were. I never really considered that I would have a job. So I'll be real. And, and honestly, you know, I had a kid before I ever thought that I would have a job doing this. You know what I mean? I was ready for blue collar work for the rest of my life, but just rhyming over here on the side for fun. And then when uh, we made a CD and tried to take it a little more serious, we made a record called Overcast, and people from outside of my city popped on it. They was like, yo, we like this, come do a show. Come fuck with us. And that's where, to me, I was just like, whoa, okay, let me let me rethink all this, because I think maybe I can you know, get out here and, and, and try to move some words around, you know? How's it feel being able to, you know, come to LA and pack the house up? I mean, it's beautiful, man. LA, though, it's a, it, this city is so supportive of just hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like, before anybody knew who we were anywhere else, LA was already giving us love. You know what I mean? Because it's like, these kids here, they want art, they want movement, they want hip hop, they want positivity. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not the same anywhere else, really. I'm not even front. LA has got something, California. California got something that I don't see nowhere else. You know, where it's just like... Whenever we come to Los Angeles, my balls hit real low. You know, like, what do you know? It's just the gravity. You know? I was just making an observation about my whole thing about the other day. It's actually, it's actually San Andreas Paul. I got calls, let's do a little jangle jingle. Paul Bondi, alright, last one. Last one, I'm really together called Felt. We got a third one that we're about to sit down and break up. Um, can't really talk about much about it though because we're trying to keep secrets. How you Merch? Me and Merch, man, man, I was on tour maybe like eight years ago and uh, the whole Living Legends, they used to throw this thing up in the up in the bay called Broke Ass Summer Jam. Right. And uh, they used to throw these big shows and they had me and Idea come out to one of the shows and that's how I first really got down with them. I mean really, the first time I met them, they did a show in Minneapolis and I came to it and I did the whole shake their hand, meet them, you know, I respect you, here's my tape, check it out. And then they dipped. But when they called us up and asked us to do the show, we were just like, alright, that's what's up. We came out here, we rocked with them. And from there, me and Mercy just kind of became like real homies. Like, you know, I know a lot of people want to know that story, so there it is. All right, man, once again, I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Showing my success in the future and everything I'll do. There it is, y'all.